Kirsten Cinema. This, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, head scratching and pontificating, and you know, what does this mean, and why did she do this? Well, you know, she did this obviously for a couple of very straightforward reasons. The main one is that she has largely abandoned the Democratic Party. She hasn't shown up for a, a couple of years for the regular Tuesday Democratic caucus lunches. Um, she, uh, or she might have uh, shown up for one or two of them. I'm, I'm, I may be entirely, may be wrong on that, but by and large, she doesn't, she basically just ignores her colleagues. In fact, she was uh, hanging out with the Republicans during the vote on, on uh, gay marriage, you know, a couple days ago. So, although she did vote to, to uh, you know, uh, uh, to have a federal law saying that states must recognize gay marriages that happen in uh, other states, even if they've banned them in their own states. But, you know, she's stabbed her own party in the back enough times. Uh, you know, the one that most people remember is her, her thumbs down, her, her attempt to imitate John McCain with a curtsy uh, to the minimum wage, to raising the minimum wage. But, you know, basically she has become the classic example of a politician for sale. I mean, this is, this is Kirsten Sinema. She, she has been basically ever since she got into the Senate. Uh, she started out as a Green, uh, you know, back in the day in Arizona, kind of climbed the ladder as a Green, um, and then as a progressive Democrat, because that's what got her power. But uh, getting to power apparently was a, a way of getting to wealth. And now that the Supreme Court has said that you can raise enormous amounts of money for your campaigns, and if you lose the election, you get to keep that money, She's, you know, on this glide path, and the and the and the thing that she was facing was Ruben Gallo in in 2024 was going to kick her ass. I mean, the 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 public polling in Arizona is uh, unambiguous. 37 percent of Arizona Democrats have a favorable opinion of Kirsten Cinema. 57 percent of Arizona Democrats don't like her. So, I mean, you know. A, uh, an armadillo could probably beat her in the primary. So what does she do? She gets herself out of the primary. Being an independent, she's not subject to a primary. Her name will be on the ballot. Now, what it's going to do, Gaijo is, in all probability, is going to be the guy who is going to be the Democratic nominee. I mean, it's, it's you know, two years down the road. A hell of a lot can happen in two years. But in all probability, he's, he's a member of the House from Arizona. He's very strong. He's a good progressive. He's beloved by the people in his district, and he's well-known across the state. He polls really well. And, in fact, this morning, he tweeted. Let me get to this tweet. He just, I, in fact, I just retweeted it so that you can easily find it if you want to reference it. He says, my statement on Kirsten Cinema abandoning the Democratic Party. And then he, he links to his fundraising page, by the way. And he says, last month, the voters of Arizona made their voices heard loud and clear. They want leaders who put the people of Arizona first. He's talking about, you know, the reelection of Mark Kelly. He said, we need senators who will put Arizona and, and a lot of Democrats in Arizona. He said, we need and the rejection of Kerry Lake and, and everything else. He said, we need senators who will put Arizonans ahead of big drug companies and Wall Street bankers. Whether in the Marine Corps or in Congress, I have never backed down from fighting for Arizonans. And at a time when our nation needs leadership most, Arizona deserves a voice that won't back down in the face of struggle. Unfortunately, Senator, Senator Sinema is once again putting her own interests ahead of getting things done for Arizonans. Amen. So, the, see, when Bernie runs as an independent in Vermont, the Democratic Party either doesn't put up a candidate against him, or if they do, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of a throwaway. Well, actually, back when I lived in Vermont, when we started this program, we started this program in 2003, in March of 2003, and I believe it was the 2006 election. It might have even been 2004, because Bernie started doing brunch with Bernie with us in late 2003. And... You know, every Friday he was on the program for 11 years. And, uh, and we were sued by the Democratic Party in, in, um, in Vermont. And, uh, you know, because they were like, you know, Bernie shouldn't be on your show during the election. It's an election gift, blah de blah That lawsuit went away. You know, it just kind of died. But basically the Democratic Party in, in Vermont just supports Bernie, even though he runs as an independent. Same thing in Maine with the Democratic Party supporting Angus King. Well, that's not going to be what happens in Arizona, even though Kirsten Sinema is trying to pretend it will be. 
What's going to happen in Arizona is that the Democratic Party is going to put up a candidate. So you're going to have a three-way race. And in all probability, the Republican candidate will be Carrie Lake. Because, you know, in Arizona, the primaries always go for the most radical candidate and the most radical candidate on the Republican side who has a, you know, big name recognition across the state is Carrie Lake. And so you're going to have all of the Republicans voting for Carrie Lake. None of them are going to vote for Kirsten Sinema. She's got a 90 percent voting record with Joe Biden. And but, you know, there's going to be enough Democrats they're going to be smearing Gallego or Gallego or whoever happens to be the Democratic nominee. The Republicans are going to be smearing that person. And, you know, Kirsten Sinema will pull enough, enough votes away from the Democrat that in 2024, in all probability, Arizona is now going to have a Republican senator. And Kirsten Sinema will be able to retire and get a good job on K Street, like, you know, like Paul Ryan that pays $5 million a year as a lobbyist. You got, you know, Tom Daschle used to be the head of the Democrats in the Senate. He was the Senate majority leader. He's now a lobbyist for Comcast. I mean, this is what retired politicians do to, to make millions and millions of dollars a year in their retirement. And so I just see this as, as A, incredibly cynical, B, very destructive to the Democratic Party in Arizona, and, and C, you know, destructive to the Democrats' chances to hold the Senate in 2024. But Kirsten Sinema doesn't give a rat's ass about any of that. She only cares about herself. I mean, that's been obvious now for four years. She only cares about herself. And, you know, she's, she's uh, making these uh, uh, highfalutin statements uh, saying that, uh, hang on just a second, I got, I've got a quote here from her. She wrote a piece in the Arizona Republic uh, that was published today. And she says, Pressure in both parties pull leaders to the edges, allowing the loudest, most extreme voices to determine their respective parties' priorities and expecting the rest of us to fall in line. Well, you know, there's some truth to that with regard to the Republican Party. But in Arizona with the Democratic Party, A, that's nonsense. And B, if, even if you want to say, okay, the far left of the Democratic Party is Bernie Sanders, please identify for me even one policy that Bernie Sanders advocates that the majority of Americans don't. There aren't any, to the best of my knowledge. You know, it's, it's the influence of corporate money and billionaire money in politics is, is, is the only thing that is preventing the, the genuine, you know, what the people of America genuinely want, strengthen Social Security, expand Medicare, make Medicare for all for America, um, you know, build out our infrastructure, solarize our homes. Uh, I mean, it, it, <sighs> Free college for everyone. I mean, you know, we, we could go through the list. There's, a, you know, a, a long list of possibilities here. They're all things people support. On the other hand, on the Republican side, the fringes on the Republican side, they want to end democracy. That's not something most Americans support. So Kirsten Sinema is engaging in the just most cynical type of false equivalence. And, and you know, she, she'll support deals that... Uh, you know, as uh, you know, uh, the Biden and the Democrats rightly are, com are, are saying, hey, we've gotten a lot done so far. But, you know, sadly, every single one of these major pieces of legislation that Kirsten Sinema voted yes for also had giant, you know, gift wrapped Easter eggs for the, you know, gifts for the or Christmas gifts for the uh, for the corporations that support them. Chuck Schumer just issued a, uh, a statement that I just got an email about 10 minutes ago. Uh, he said she's going to uh, keep her committee assignments. I agreed to that. So she's going to continue to uh, essentially caucus with the Democrats. That's a good thing. But, you know, over the short term, I don't think she wants to commit complete political suicide. But come on. I mean, give me a break. This, this is, uh, this just sucks. <laughs> what can you say?